Let's start off. Uh, could you introduce yourself and tell us your role on Valhalla? So my name is Rafael Lacoste. I'm the brand art director and uh, specifically working on this game, Valhalla. Awesome. Uh, first off, how are you feeling at this stage of development? We're almost one month away from launch. You guys work on these game things for, for years. How do you feel right now? So I feel it's um, it's very close to the finish line. We we almost pushed the, the baby uh, safely to bed. <laughs> uh, it's been a very very bumpy and long ride. Uh, lots of challenge, but uh, I'm very proud of uh, what we have now in terms of uh, experience, global experience, world. Um, spending uh, a lot of time playing the game actually lately and uh, reviewing and reporting, you know, some stuff we we need to polish. But uh, it's uh, it's getting exciting. Awesome. Um Personally, I've always loved uh, video game concept art. It's just something that's always caught my eye as a gamer. Um, and I told you beforehand that I still have the limited edition art books for Assassin's Creed 1. And oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> before our interview, I flipped through and found some of your quotes. So uh, as someone who has worked on this series uh, dating back to the first game, what has it been like to see the evolution of Assassin's Creed since 2007 for you? Uh, it's been very inspiring and interesting because, uh, you know, I, I would meet some people who would say, oh man, you've been for 15 years on this brand. Uh, I, you know, you're not getting bored of making always, you know, over and over the same kind of games. But I, I said, no, it's not the same game. For me, it's always a new adventure because, for instance, you go to, uh, to, uh, to Egypt, you, you visit magnificent landscape, uh, deserts, uh, also in the Mediterranean area, but you can now visit uh, the Scandinavian, Scandinavian landscape, England. We have so much opportunities to, to offer variety to the player, but also as you know, creative artists and art directors, it's it's super inspiring to be able to uh, to evolve in different universe and, and different stories. So I would say like, uh, it's the same brand. It's uh, a brand I love because uh, it's create, creating a very nice balance between the credibility of creating something, but also bringing something very unique uh and very uh very nice adventures to to the players so um I, I like the balance between the reality but also the way we can twist things and we play with blurry lines and and the gray areas to to be very creative and make a lot of choices i'm glad that you mentioned that um because uh looking at your art on social media you seem to have a love for sci-fi um and i've always loved how assassin's creed blends sci-fi and history kind of together in its own unique way can you talk about what it's like to approach both of those sides in art direction it's uh it's 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 a very different challenge uh, what i like is that we can we can go in two different directions and with valhalla also what was very exciting for us is that we also brought some meat world so it's not only uh the the recreation of england but it's also different worlds we can we can bring to life um uh, i would say like for the sci-fi universe and, and and maybe anticipation present days anticipation um for sure we we can make the comparison very easily with what we, we see when we just you know pass the door from house so um we need to find interesting twists interesting designs to uh, to have something interesting for the for the player exciting so this is where we play with the design we play with the uh, the inspiration we have in the present days uh, but uh, we 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 are a bit more grounded in the present day, so that's why I like sci-fi because it offers more design choices, more opportunities to be more creative and and uh, bring something um, more interesting for the player as well. Because you know, what is the point to play a game that looks exactly like what you have outdoors when you go you know on the street and you would see exactly the same the same thing in your game? No, I don't want to see that. When I play a game, I want to escape. I want to dream. I want to feel emotion. So that's that's why. Uh, Sci-fi is something great, based on sometimes present days and grounded things. And what I love when we recreate the past is that we play with the blurry lines to have something maybe more interesting, very twisted in terms of uh, environment design and characters. That's awesome. Thank you. That was a great answer. Um, uh, let's talk more about Valhalla's world. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous from what I've played. Some oh, of these landscapes, yeah, they look like paintings to me. Uh, and more than anything, I just wanted to go off script and explore. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, how have these massive worlds changed the way you approach art direction? And what role does, you know, increasing technology play in your ability to deliver that? So first I would say like, thanks a lot for the compliment. <laughs> uh, I can have a better compliment that hearing that it looks like a painting because that's exact, exactly what we wanted to to to, to make. Uh, we tried to make that on, on a few games and, and, and this one, especially we were inspired more by traditional paintings more than, you know, real photos. 
So that's always what we try to bring. Uh, have a stylized vision, uh, bring emotion through the color palettes, the different moods. Uh, the challenge we had also was the drawing distance to be able to tease the pair to different POIs and location from very far away. So we had a lot of technical challenge with the technical direction to be able to show these details from very far. Uh, so we still have to to to, to you know develop uh, these kind of things, and it's it's very technical, but also very artistic because it's uh, the way to play with image composition, a uh, field of change, uh, the way you can create a strong mental map of the world through the change of color palettes, mood, seasons. All these different elements are really helping the player to localize himself in the game and be able to see, oh, I was there. Oh, that's the the birch forest with the the yellow uh, leaves and this one with the, the the red forest so we try to to create landmarks not only with the very localized elements but also areas that would be like very memorable in terms of color palettes and mood awesome i don't know if that was the 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 question you had <laughs> oh no that was a great answer um i'm glad you mentioned mood because during my demo um, there's absolutely a Dark Ages England mood that I was getting. The lighting is very distinct with kind of the clouds coming over and affecting the way that it hits the ground. Oh, yeah. um, and in some ways, I mean, the original Assassin's Creed felt uh, the word that comes to mind is um, kind of hazy almost. Um, it reminded me of the original game. It's got kind of this dark, dark, gritty, almost moody atmosphere. Uh, was that parallel to the first game intentional in any way? And how did you settle on that mood, that aesthetic for Valhalla? Uh, that's, yeah, that's a, a good point. Actually, I didn't make any parallel between the first okay. one and, and <laughs> Dark Ages. But I think there's there's definitely a connection you can make between the Dark Ages and, you know, the early mid Middle Ages. Um, you know, when we created Acre with uh, this uh, kind of distorted palette with a lot of fog and mist, we wanted to 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 fill this kind of gritty uh, era and feel, and I, that's something we, we wanted to have as well. If we just talk about adjective and, and the way we want wanted to define location and and some biomes, uh, for instance, for East Anglia that uh, you saw already, uh, we wanted to have to bring this kind of very foggy, misty, mysterious, and gritty uh, area for 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 the game. But it's a uh, it's interesting because we have these moments where uh, we are like really boldly recreating the Dark Ages and some areas that are very fresh, even if you're in England. Uh, some people would think England is just, you know, beautiful rolling hills and some ancient castles from the, the Middle Ages, but it's actually way more diverse and varied. And uh, when we went on a scouting trip, we, we took a lot of inspiration and we wanted to bring all these uh, bold, beautiful features of biomes in, in the world game. Yeah, I noticed um, the difference. I'm glad you said that between the biomes. Is, was there like a specific flavor, you know, in mind for each separate area in this game between East Anglia and uh, Leta Chestershire, I think is where I played? That's Shire. That's Shire, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you said 12. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah, because uh, we have different elements we can use for uh, to, to bring a very bold... Uh, thematic like visual thematic for for the for the the biomes and the regions uh, we play with topology lighting uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, tree species we can have animals and it's a, it's a global feel that we try to 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 bring to life for every single region so every single uh, narrative arc in a region will have a specific flavor and mood and lighting and it will be very memorable because you will get this uh, you know global picture uh, that will be supported by the the tone of the quest but also the visual direction of of the region so the desert shire is more uh, autumn uh, dry a lot of uh, you know dry grass uh, we have um, a very old grown uh, oak trees with the uh, red leaves so it's it's very unique very specific to this region and when you go to uh, to east anglia we will have this very misty i was saying more like a greedy feeling and swampy area uh, if you go to Wessex, it's more like summer. If you go to uh, other regions, it's going to be to be more like maybe early winter. So every single region will have a very bold uh, feel. Great. I'm excited to to explore all of those. Uh, so earlier you mentioned going to different parts of the world with this franchise, um, and you visited so many different time periods as well. Uh, if you had to choose your favorite across all of these games, uh, what was your most fun to work on and why? <sighs> Uh, that's tough a question. tricky question. Uh, yeah, tough question. Uh, I, I really love uh, Norway and the Scandinavian landscape. Uh, I went with my wife in 2012. We did a, a week of hiking in the Lofoten Islands. 
that was pretty amazing because the landscape there looked like uh, from a different planet. They look like really from uh, another world. It's uh, it's amazing. So we, we did some hiking in the fjords and uh, I took a lot of photos there. Um, I was really fascinated when we came back with the team, we came back in the Northern Ireland specifically and then to, to England. I think the, the scouting trip is really where you can really anchor vision when you get the most inspiration for, for the game. I would say for, uh, yeah, the conception of, uh, of Valhalla was super interesting, but I love also a black flag. You know, it was tricky. We had to go to the, to the, you know, the Caribbean. It, it was very tough. So <laughs> take photos, uh, in, a, in, in a few beautiful places and, and, and uh, be immersed in the jungle. That was great too. I just played uh, black flag and I've, I've been replaying the entire series actually since earlier this year. And, okay. uh, Black Flag sticks out in my mind as one of my absolute favorite. It's it's so distinct in its uh, in its setting. Yep. Um, so yep. that was one of my favorites. Yeah, um, I love that one too. Yeah, it's a great game. Uh, so it's fair to say that you've seen a lot of different iterations of the Hidden Blade over the course of these games. Um, did you have a direct role in the design of this new Hidden Blade? And can you tell us if you were what you were going for? Because this this new one is awesome. I love the way it looks. Yeah, it's it's actually funny. We call that the hidden blade when it's on the top. <laughs> right, you know? it's right there. It's uh, it's a cool it's a cool evolution of the hidden blade. It's still called the hidden blade. It's obvious blade. Uh, yes, uh, we we talked with the uh, with the uh, with Darby, and I, and I think the idea was to to bring this uh, Abbasid Caliphate's inspirations so are coming for Syria from Syria. So it's a, it's a gift, you know. You you get that. Uh, it's it's a nice contrast between the Norse engravings. And something that is really bringing the flavor from uh, from the Abbasid Caliphate. So it's it's more like coming from the the, the Middle East. You know, I was I was involved in the, in the visual direction of this one, and we did a, a lot of different uh, iterations of arts. Uh, I wanted to have to use this kind of copperish color mixed with the uh, beautiful stones. Um, I wanted to have something that would contrast a bit with the uh, the, the the beautiful but also harsh. Um, uh, design we can have in all the Viking uh, engravings. So so yeah, that that was. That was a, a nice addition to, to this game. Awesome. Um, yeah, you said it there. Eivor manages to feel like a Viking and an assassin at the same time. And we talked about Black yeah. Flag earlier. Uh, it reminds me of Edward because he's very much a pirate, um, but he runs around. I totally agree with that. Yeah. He runs yeah, around the I hood, totally uses agree with the, that. The, the blades. Uh, how do you design a main character to feel like both of these things? Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I love the connection with uh, Edward Kenway. Uh, I think that's the, the best we can have because the first idea was to create a true Viking and to deliver the Viking fantasy. That was exactly what we wanted to aim. And then we added this layer of, okay, we we learn how to be an assassin. So we, we, we make a connection with the assassin franchise and with the, the, the assassin character. But first, I'm really a true Viking. So that's that's the same kind of path we would have with Edward Kenway when he's represented really like like a pirate with all the trophies you know he would have them himself and then he would eventually uh, become an assassin so that's that's i like this kind of uh, mix and hybrid of two character designs uh, making a nice connection between a very strong fantasy and then the assassin uh, franchise yeah you can you can really feel that um I wanted to switch gears over uh to a character we didn't see in the demo uh but he was in the story trailer Basim um, he's a, yeah. a, an assassin from Constantinople, I believe. Uh, it's clear he plays an important role in Valhalla. Um, working on Revelations, did you bring inspiration from working on that game when designing Basim? Yes, yes, again, okay. right on spot. <laughs> um, it's, uh, yeah, we took inspiration from the Ottoman you know, Empire, but also we wanted to, to make a nice link with even I would say the first game uh, with Altair because he's almost wearing a uniform, you know, the the, the uniform of the, the killing machine, the assassin. So we really want to 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 have this flavor back, and uh, it's almost like uh, I would say like for the nostalgic of the franchise, having like a true assassin coming and contrasting with the true Vikings, and that's something we we wanted to to make. And I, I remember we did the first design of this guy, not only inspired by by the Ezio we had in Constantinople, who was really blending into this. Uh, a beautiful city with the Ottoman design, but also with Altair and the first, uh, the first AC. Yeah, his his outfit does look ve very Altair to me. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the end of my planned uh, questions. Um, 
I did want to ask okay. you, this came to mind, um, just the designs of all of the separate pieces of armor. Um, how do you approach mm. kind of delivering a similar vibe when you've got so many different things going on and the player can choose how they look? Yeah, that's that's a, a big challenge we have because uh, it's it's also a question for all the talents we have working on this franchise to balance uh, the quantity of stuff uh, we have to create to offer a lot of freedom to the player, but also make sure that we have something that looks homogeneous and beautiful at the same time. Uh, so we have a lot of talented people working with us. It's uh, it's also a lot of uh, sync we have to do with the game design team and make sure that uh, we kind of respond to the evolution of the character to the storyline, but also to the, the the possibility of being able to customize your character and you know play with all the crafting. Uh, so yeah, so we, we come with designs uh, that could be like full outfits, but also sometimes it could be just pieces, uh, different elements we can add together. And for sure, we have sometimes the perfect match. So if you have a good taste, you will be able to match some you know a very nice outfit. And if you don't have very good taste, then it can <laughs> it can look like really like <laughs> something like very messy. But uh, I think it's also um, being able to have the freedom of choosing what you want and how you want to customize your player. So before we had a bit less of kind of uh, possibilities and in, in this case, we wanted to, to offer more freedom. Yeah, uh, thanks to a lead um, that Darby gave me, I was able to find a Hidden Ones uh, gauntlet piece and that piece looked great. Like I, my mind was yeah. racing about what the whole outfit's going to look like. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Um, so if you had to choose one thing, uh, what are you most excited for players to experience when your game comes out next month? Uh, for me, uh, because I'm someone who is very contemplative, I'm spending most of my time going in the world, roaming and uh, clearing all the locations. So I don't know what kind of player you are, but I would say spend the most time possible in the world of uh, Norway and, and England and discover all the, the all the different hidden places, the different mysteries we have in this world, because it's amazing. And I think it's maybe the most diverse and beautiful world we ever created on the brand. Wow, that's exciting to hear. Um, I'm glad you mentioned, uh, or you asked what kind of player I am. That is me. I, I definitely do want to get lost. Um, I, I wish I had unlimited time on my demo because if I would have had that, I, I, I would have just gone very slowly, read every note that's littered around there. And um, just the way these landscapes are designed, there's so many visual cues that were you know, drawing me like, I want to see what's in that tower. I want to um, explore those underground areas. Um, many, there were so many of them in the demo. Um, yeah. so that's the kind of player I am. Yeah. Cool. Amazing. Yeah. So, uh, Thanks, that's, uh, that's all I have in terms of, um, plan questions. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much for your time and good luck on the launch of Valhalla. I love your game, what I played so far, and I can't wait to play. Thanks a lot, man. So see you in Valhalla. <laughs> exactly. I had such an awesome time chatting with Raphael. So big thanks to him for joining me here on the channel and for sending me the amazing concept art you guys have been seeing throughout this video. Shout out to the UBPR creator team for setting up all these interviews. It was such a great opportunity and I really hope I get to do stuff like this in the future. And of course, stay tuned for more Valhalla content. That's it for my interviews, but I've got so much more gameplay. I know it's coming out a little bit slowly, but I promise more is coming. Make sure you're subbed to the channel so you don't miss it. Big thanks to my YouTube members, Grass, David, Kamal, Casey, Matthew, Spyro, JVO, John, Lil Man, Brock, Tia, Level42, and Nos for supporting the channel. If you want to support me further, click the join button below this video. In exchange for your support, you'll unlock custom badges and emotes to use in chat. Check the link in the description for more information. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.